everybody. This is Ryan McClanahan with HistoryThroughCards.com. I hope you're all doing very well today. So I want to tell you about an actress in one of my all-time favorite science fiction flicks from the 1950s, This Island Earth. And the actress is Faith Demer. Now this is actually a really nice set. It's the uh, 1955 Keynes Film Stars from England. And you're going to find a lot of uh, actors and actresses in it that um, I think you might not be able to find anywhere else. And I, this may be one of those. I didn't see a whole lot of, of her cards out there. So I, I think this is going to be your best bet. Um, the set itself has uh, Marilyn Monroe and John Wayne in it and Virginia Mayo of The Best Years of Our Lives, which is another really great flick. Um, I think John Fontaine and Joan Collins are also in it, and Roy Rogers. Uh, the set also has a sister set, if you will, and uh, it looks like this. Now, uh, this is a ABC Gum Film Stars, and this is Robert Stack. Uh, and I picked this card up because he's the host of Unsolved Mysteries, which is uh, one of my all-time favorite shows growing up and it was the uh, cause of a lot of sleepless nights for me <laughs> but um you're gonna find that there's a lot of uh major hollywood film stars from the silent film era to the talkies to the 1950s and 60s that don't actually have a lot of cards and, and these could be actually your your top flight stars such as Jimmy Stewart or Humphrey Bogart um, and I found this also to be true with your lesser known stars as well uh, and, and I might go into that in a little bit more detail later on um, what I wanted to do was kind of tell you about this island earth and uh, Faith Demir as well because I think they both have some really great stories behind the cards and so um, you know, actually, with these cards, I the the uh, backs are the backs are blank as well, so it can be a little difficult um, to try to find out uh, what what they are if you're not familiar with them. The um, I believe this is 1956, but again, I, I've heard 1955, and and the same with this 55 or 56. However, um, the uh, Kane, the Canes cards have uh, a red on the top that says printed. I don't know if you can see it. I'll flip it up there real quick. Uh, printed in Great Britain. In fact, they're both printed in Great Britain because uh, they're British sets. Uh, however, um, Faith Jumeir came up uh, as an actress in 1941. Uh, she got into a pretty serious car accident and while she was recuperating she uh, went to a party and she met Howard Hughes and who signed her to a contract with RKO Pictures and uh, at the time I think the two of them ended up dating and uh, well there was an age difference there he was 35 and she was 16 and um, if you've seen the movie The Aviator uh, which um, kind of details Howard Hughes' career from uh, 1927 to 1947. Uh, Faith Demir is um, played by Kelly Garner, and uh, she's actually um, in a couple movies that I tried to see. Um, you know, Faith Demir, that is, <laughs> not Kelly Garner. Uh, in 1950, she's in a movie called Where Danger Lives with Robert Mitchum. And actually, Robert Mitchum has a, a number of cards out there, so he's not difficult. Uh, but he's in a really nice 1948 um, Kawada chocolate set, and I think that's from Holland. So um, she's also in uh, Tales from Wells Fargo from 1961. And uh, I, I didn't check that one out. Uh, I thought that was kind of a strange thing because I wasn't sure if it's the bank Wells Fargo. And I was thinking, like, like how fun could that be? I mean, come on. In, in any event, uh, I might just 
check that out real quickly at some point. And then she's in uh, The Atomic Man from 1955, and uh, It Came Beneath the Sea from 1955 again, and uh, 77 Sunset Strip, which I actually did see. That's from 1960. I th no, I think it's from the late 50s to the early 60s. But um, when I did see it, I saw it in pieces, and uh, I thought the dialogue was really kind of lame. Uh, I, I don't know anybody who spoke like that. But uh, Ephraim Zimblis Jr. is in that, and he's actually a really good actor. So it's the only reason why I stuck around to check it out. Um, in any case, the, what she's really kind of known for is one of the original Scream Queens of the 1950s. And uh, this island, Earth, as well. So I wanted to kind of get into that. Um, the film itself is based on three short stories from Raymond F. Jones, who was writing in thrilling wonder stories. And uh, he's actually known more for his short stories in Amazing Stories magazine. And so the first edition, <laughs> if you will, is called The Alien Machine. And the second is The Shroud of Secrecy. And uh, it's followed up by The Greater Conflict. And so um, this was originally published between June and December of 1949, and the last one in February of 1950. And so um, in 1952, they decided to merge all three into a book called This Island Earth. And so... Um, they, uh, they really wanted to get it into film form, and in early 1954, uh, they started to film in Mount Wilson, California, and uh, the movie had a budget of um, 800000 and it actually made uh, $1.7 million. Uh, it was actually one of the better science fiction films of the day, and it was... Um, really kind of plot revolves around Cal Meacham, played by Rex Reeson, who's an engineer, and he gets recruited by a bunch of uh, aliens from another planet who are in a intergalactic war, and they tell him basically that uh, the Earth is just one of many planets that are caught in this war, and that's where you get this island Earth from, and uh, it. It has kind of uh, a feel of um, the island hopping of World War II in the Pacific. Um, but um, Faith Diemer is also a, uh, I guess she's a psychologist as well. Um, and, and she plays the love interest of Rex Reeson. Now, um, as far as, uh, I guess you could say, island hopping or the Pacific or World War II, uh, there are three uh, actors in this who were actually in World War II. Um, and the first one is Russell Johnson. And so uh, I looked for a card of Russell Johnson and I couldn't find him. And uh, you guys might know him better as the professor on Gilligan's Island. And um, he actually does have a few cards, um, not during his acting career, but afterwards. And uh, I believe he's also in the Twilight Zone as well. So uh, his cards are, I think the ones that I saw at least, uh, were autographed from Tops, at least uh, from the Twilight Zone. And then uh, Rex Reeson does not have any cards that I'm aware of during his career. And uh, he also has a few cards afterwards um, that are actually signed as well. Um, and I don't think they're actually issued by a major company like Tops or Flair or anything like that. Um, and then uh, another actor who plays Exeter is uh, Jeff Morrow. And uh, he's actually in the 1958 Tops TV Western set, which is actually a really nice looking set. Um, and then Robert Nichols, who plays the... Uh, Reeson's, um, his, his assistant, he doesn't have any cards that I'm aware of. And then 
neither does Lance Fuller either. So um, that's pretty much it for the actors who have cards. Um, the creature effects uh, in this movie and the special effects in this movie are really kind of outstanding for the day. So I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about the movie and the production itself. So even if you haven't seen the movie, I'm sure you've seen the Metal Luna Mutant, which is one of the most recognizable um, movie creatures of all time. And it was actually Bud Westmore, head of Universal Studios uh, makeup department, that uh, created the Metal Luna Mutant. He actually didn't get along with anybody on set, and there were a lot of creative differences, so he split. He took off, or I think they kind of like let him go. Um, in any event, uh, it was Melissa Patrick who designed the mutant or the uh, creature um, on paper and then, um, you know, in actual form. <laughs> and uh, she had help from Jack Ke uh, Keevan and Robert Dawn as well. And uh, they actually created um, legs for the uh, rest of the suit, but it didn't really work out very well. And um, much of it was made from, I guess, plaster of Paris uh, and foam rubber. Uh, and they used, um, I guess, uh, Anne Sheridan's looks or her bust for the head of the creature. And uh, I, I don't think that's actually very flattering. I don't think she actually knew, knew that at the time, but if you look at Anne Sheridan and you look at the Metaluna mutant, you can kind of see that there's some similarities there. Um, in any way, uh, Melissa Patrick is really best known for her work on the creature from the Black Lagoon. And <clears throat> uh, Rex Reeson is actually in the sequel or I think even maybe the third installment of The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And I, I only saw that movie like once, so I'm not terribly familiar with it, but it is another classic uh, 1950s uh, movie creature, <clears throat> the, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, that is. And uh, you guys probably should check that out if you haven't. So <clears throat> um, the uh, filming of... Uh, specific scenes uh, from Metal Luna itself wasn't done by Joseph M. Newman, the director, but by Jack Arnold. And <clears throat> I think what they did was they uh, had film footage uh, from Newman of those scenes and they didn't really like it. So they thought that Jack Arnold was better suited for that particular role. And uh, you can see it on film. So um, the other thing too was the uh, the music, which really goes very well with the movie itself. Um, that was done by George Gershenson. And Henry Mancini is, is also, he's uncredited in the movie, but his music was uh, used. And I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, myself having listened to a lot of Henry Mancini over the years. Uh, it, it, I don't, I don't recognize it, but I, I'm sure it's there if people have said it. Um, maybe you guys would know. I have no idea. However, uh, I do want to get your opinion on the movie and um, on the actors and actresses, if you have one, in the comment section below. And uh, tell me, uh, if you do actually collect um, movie star cards, do you have a favorite? Um, and then uh, on top of that, give me a like and subscribe if you want. Uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't. I, I don't get a whole lot of likes on my stuff. Uh, however, that's the name of the game, I guess. Or, um, but I, I do really appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out my uh, videos. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. And so uh, with that, guys, I, I really appreciate it and have a good day. So bye.